Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Um, Today is the 33rd episode of um, Comments Day. Um, You know, ordinarily in Comments Day, I I sort of list all the super thanks people. I'm not going to be able to do that this time because I've been away on tour in uh, Australia and New Zealand for two weeks and um, too many super thanks people have accumulated. I I still love you all, um, but you're going to have to look in the description um, to find your name if you are a super thanks person. Um, I warmly uh, express my gratitude to you all. Thank you so much. Um, Let's get stuck into these comments. I can't wait. Can you? Justin Hawkins rides again. Again. John S3, with a lovely super thanks, says, um, do you have a personal spinal tap moment that you would share, like Hello Cleveland, while playing Miami? There was a there was an incident that happened once. I, th- I, d- I can't remember where it was. Maybe it was in Newcastle or something like that. But um, we had a quick change area that was just off the stage, and uh, we went into it, and we sort of got into our, um, you know, encore outfits, and everybody sort of zhuzhed up their hair and got ready to go back on stage but then it was a a door that needed a (laughs) needed a code for us to get back out of it and to get back on the stage and so we were stuck in this little room and waiting for somebody to realize what happened and let us in from the other side um thus making our re-emergence on the stage completely underwhelming we totally missed the moment that was that was a bit spinal tap that's that's a bit like getting lost backstage but getting locked in a, a small cupboard room that's the nearest thing i think that's happened to us The thing about Spinal Tap that I always say, though, is that that film is just brilliantly observed. And the reason why it's so funny to musicians is that a lot of those things just happen on a a daily basis. And as preposterous um, as preposterous as this sort of lifestyle is, there's always stuff that happens that reminds you of that movie. Um, Because it's not this isn't a real job. It's not real life. You know, doing this stuff is uh, it's a ludicrous way for grown grown adult people to try and make a living. And things like that just happen. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, thanks for your comment. So, Victoria D, with a lovely super thanks, asks, Hello, Justin Hawkins. Love your channel. My husband and I were wondering if having friends in the music industry affects your opinion of their music. Do you have friends who make music that you dislike? Of course, no names, no names need to be named. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've got friends in the music trade who, who make music that completely leaves me cold um i've the thing about friends is that um you just want them to make stuff that's great really um and my opinion of of the music is not really the thing that makes it great or not you know i'm delighted for my friends if they have success and if they do something that i think is a misstep then it's disappointing but uh you know i always feel like it's it's a mere blip you know, I happen to believe in my friends and I think that the people that I admire and hang out with in the music trade are capable of greatness. And um, when they make great stuff, I'm just really happy for them. Um, I, ha- I had one friend, how can I put this? I'm trying to, I'll try and describe this without... I had a friend who I think made a record that I was just... I felt was was pretty appalling. Um but I was trying to imagine the scenario in the studio that led to this um, catastrophic um, misstep musically. Um, and when I spoke to this person about that situation, they said to me, oh, it's like you're in the room, you know, because I sort of hadn't, I'd imagined how the dynamic within that sort of musical en- entity had changed so far that um, somebody that I was a huge fan of and, and, and who I love very dearly was making music that was quite terrible. Um, so it has happened, you know, but um, I, I celebrate I, I celebrate my friends' successes and commiserate their um, uh, failures. <clears throat> Not that it's ever a failure. It's, it's a long game, you know. But anyway, thanks for your comment. TC Three Freeman, with a lovely super thanks, says, uh, Justin, a question for the next comments day. If you had the chance to make an entire solo album, each track with a fellow collaborator, who are some of the people you'd choose and why? 
Well, I think the first thing I would say is is that a, a project like that would definitely have one eye on the commerce factor. So I'd probably choose some of the, you know, if I could choose anybody, I would choose some of the biggest selling artists of the day. So I'd probably go for like a little bit of an Adele duet, um, maybe some sort of collaboration with Ed Sheeran, that, just just two of the tracks, I think. And that would be the lead track on side one and side two. Um, I would love to work with Linda Perry and get her singing on something because I think she's, her voice needs to be heard really. Um, and obviously her writings all over the place and you know in terms of like you hear it everywhere and also her production is um, <clears throat> you know examples of her production can be heard in the top 40 mega chart worldwide all the time but uh, I just think her her actual singing voice is so beautiful and, and fragile and, and powerful and I don't know I'd, I'd love to do something with her um, who else? I think Brian Johnson. I'd love to do something with Brian Johnson because I'd like to hear him do something different with his voice than what he does with ACDC. I mean, he did mention something to me about doing something like an Everly Brothers type collaboration with me and him, which would be really strange, but uh, definitely worth exploring. Thanks for your comment. Um, RJ. Another super thanks. Cheers, RJ. Um, great job, Justin. I've often wondered what your favourite double entendre song would be. I think this video has answered that. My favourite is definitely Holding My Own. Honourable mention to Aerosmith's big 10-inch record. Double entendre song. What would that be? What's a good one? Um, I think in terms of double entendres, um, I'm, I'm not always satisfied with a double entendre. I like a multi-entendre, maybe a triple entendre. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of stuff in the ACDC catalogue that's, that's got double entendres going on. Um, giving the dog a bone would be a good one. Gone shooting is another good one. Um, I think probably the, the, the a double entendre doesn't necessarily have to be sexual, does it? I mean, it can always be... I like There's some good drugs ones and good drug opportunities ones. I've tried to write songs like uh, Slave to the Needle, but it's about tattoos. <laughs> or, um, you know... Um, Come into my arms. It's about drugs. Um, yeah, no, you can't beat you can't beat multi entendres. Every song should have one. Never leave never leave the house without a double entendre. Brad Walshem says thanks, Doctor Hawkins. Please, can you make us a how to rhyme properly tutorial and how not to rhyme? Please help rid the world of further non rhyming shenanigans and regrettable faux pas. Make us better rhyming song lovers. Love. Thanks, Brad. Um, I long to live in a world where, you know, I, I, I think a half rhyme is okay, an internal rhyme is okay. They're all okay, but there's no substitute for, you know, in, in, an, in an Anglophonic song where you can actually use that entire lexicon that's on both sides of the Atlantic. There's so much at your disposal in terms of, you know, a glossary, a glossary of opportunities. You know, and you could just, if you spend the time, you can make anything rhyme and, you, and it would always, see, I just did it there. If you spend the time, you can make anything rhyme um, and, and you can actually have it make sense as well and not just, <clears throat> not just be, don't really want to know how your garden grows and that you know you can actually beyond like a stream of consciousness with just similar sounding words you can actually write something that's concise emotionally honest and also fucking rhymes because there's an, there's so many words there are so many words um that i saw this thing um you know when somebody challenged eminem to uh, find something that rhymed with orange and they were blown away because he had about 10 different lines that rhymed with orange but none of them fucking rhymed with orange none of them it was just him saying stuff in a slightly different way that made it sound like orange or it was you know in some instances probably just repeating the word orange or it was some stuff I don't know it just it might have been internal rhymes or or, I don't know, stuff that just sounded a bit similar, but it, it wasn't, they weren't true rhymes, and sometimes it can't be done. Orange is, is the best example of a, of, a, of a word that doesn't have a true rhyme counterpart in, its, in the anglophonic lexicon. But um, 
beyond that, there's always a way. There's always a way. Um, thanks for your comment. Van Gogo, uh, with a lovely super thanks. A couple of questions for you. One, have you ever considered starting your own record label? Two, how do you discover new music from independent artists? Um, comment, you should have your own radio show like Alice Cooper where you play your favourite music and introduce new and upcoming artists that you enjoy. I, you know, when it comes to um, starting a record label, I don't know what the point would be in that. Would, would it be to sort of curate, so I could curate an imprint that uh, puts out stuff that I like, you know? Because maybe that's the sort of self-indulgence that that I fucking love. It's a great idea. What would I call it, though? Um, rides Again? Just Rides Again. That's it. Um, rides Again Records. Hmm. It's got a nice ring to it. Um, arr, it's like rawr. Somebody could uh, perhaps design the logo for me. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Um, how do you discover new music from independent artists? Um, I usually kind of find stuff because people alert me to it. You know, I'll often get a DM saying, oh, you should check these guys out, and then I do. Um, and a lot of, um, you know, one thing to remember about the music trade is it, that it's a noble profession, but it's a tough one. Um, so people are hustling all the time. And, you know, I get given USB sticks with songs on. I get uh, sent links to SoundClouds and all sorts of things. Um, and a lot of my friends are in bands as well. Um so, you know, unsigned bands. There's music everywhere. Uh, I've, somebody told me there's uh, 100,000 new tracks uploaded to the streaming platforms on a daily basis, which is, I mean, that just seems like an unmanageable amount of uh, new music to try and keep abreast of. Um, but some of it floats to the top because, you know, you've only got to sort of stumble across something on someone's playlist and then... Tell your friends about it, really. It's all, always word of mouth. And it always has been, really. Um, thanks for your comment. B. Trevon says, uh, Good day. Thanks so much for coming to Melbourne. You were amazing. Oh, I enjoyed it in Melbourne. Thanks a lot. Question time. How do you decide on choosing a producer? What makes a good relationship with a producer? And can it go wrong? The thing about um, choosing a producer to work with is um, you need to find somebody whose personality challenges you, you know, it's somebody who asks you the right questions, someone who tries to pull from you what they need to create a hit record. I mean, the, the whole thing about being a producer is that I think <clears throat> it's definitely, a producer's only going to sort of select artists that are likely to yield a hit because it's a lot of work for a producer little glory um and and they usually they're usually paid on the back end so you know that means that they'll take a point i'm not quite sure what that means in terms of, of a percentage i've forgotten how many points i'll have to have a look back over some of the old contracts um but a producer is usually kind of only remunerated um after the event so when a, when a record is successful that's when they go off and by the Rolls Royces and stuff, so so it's imperative that you're at the top of the of your game for them to be successful. So they have to pull those performances out of you, and it isn't about being nice to you necessarily. It's about asking you the right questions that make you, you know, do a, 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 a searching inventory of your own soul to find the stuff that actually can elevate your your album to. The, the stratospheric levels that your producer wants it to get to. Um, so it's not even about, I don't even think it's about the sound of a thing, although, you know, it helps to work with a person that's made records that you enjoy the, the sound of, but it isn't just about that. It's, it's, about, it's about getting, getting your songs um, from inception to realisation in a way that um, makes everybody as much money as possible. That's, it's production, you know. They're not, it's not like a, it sounds cynical and mercenary, but I do think that that's what it's about, really. What makes a good relationship with a producer? I don't think it's necessary for it to be a good relationship. Um, I think 
I think it has to be creatively rewarding for the artist and I think it has to be financially rewarding for the producer. Can it go wrong? I think it goes wrong if if one or more of those eventualities don't materialise. That's the only way it can go wrong, really. Vinci FTW with a lovely super thanks. Here's a question. I find myself to be the most driven in my band. We are finally getting out there on platforms and gigging around everywhere. Everyone else seems not to, seems to not prioritise the band as much as I do. What should I do maybe to try and motivate them so we can be more productive? The trouble with becoming the most productive member of a band is that they'll then rely on you to be that. Um... If you take your foot off the pedal, somebody else, you know, because the necessity of chasing the momentum that you've you've described there, when you're you're on streaming platforms and you're and you're doing gigs, like if you don't organise stuff and and push the thing forward, somebody will have to because otherwise these opportunities will disappear and they won't like that. So I think um, you know doing doing anything musically is 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 an undertaking and it's difficult to urge people to sort of pull their fingers out and, and pull their weight to use two different um, idioms. I think if you just um, take a step back and, and, and you'll, you'll, find, you'll find that the dynamic will change in a way that's more rewarding for you. You don't want to be the one dragging everyone around. Tom Kettere asks with a lovely super thanks, have you ever dabbled in jazz, young Jedi? Um, I've only dabbled because I don't really understand jazz um i would love to have studied jazz but i understand that it's so it, it really un, it, you really have to have the ways of jazz in you have to be uh, indoctrinated really to to fully appreciate its majesty and and how it works some of my best friends are jazz musicians and i adore it because it's it's just like it's so exotic to me i don't i don't know how it works and i don't know about the modes i don't know about the scales i don't know like the the chord voicings and everything of jazz is is just so foreign to me i mean i love it but i'm not going to pretend to have a fucking clue what's going on but maybe that's the the beauty of it for me, I, I'm, I'm not. I mean, I think if I really, if I really wanted to, I think I would probably try to educate myself in the ways of jazz. But I just wouldn't know where to start, and I enjoy listening to it. So maybe that's enough. You know, it's good to just be an enthusiast of a thing. You don't necessarily have to master everything, do you? Or do you? No. <laughs> Justin Hawkins writes again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos, and always leave comments because I'll always read them and. Uh, Wherever possible, I'll react to them honestly. Have a lovely day, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.